Okay, so I've never seen... I think you showed me one episode of this before. I feel like we did. It was one of those where we were just sort of letting Netflix play, and I think it, it came on, and yeah. we were like, let's watch this. But I don't actually know that much about it, so you're gonna have to, like, explain it. Yeah, I'm definitely not the most qualified to tell you about this, but, like, so Star Trek, basically, this is the original series. Um, it aired back in the 1960s, and this is uh, season two, episode 15, The Trouble with Troubles. Um, you don't have to watch them in order because a lot of them don't have to be watched in order. Uh, but basically it's about um, the USS Enterprise and its captain and crew uh, that are going out into a five-year mission to go um, and basically map the solar system uh, and the different other solar systems beyond our solar system. Uh, interacting with aliens and stuff like that, but their their one mandate is that even though they are a government organization, their um, their one mandate is you don't necessarily get in the middle of other people's um, uh, governments and stuff like that. You leave them alone, like yeah. you you don't get into the into all of that. And so they're just basically making friends across the solar system. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and so they're, they're mapping. They, they've got a, a science officer, um, which is uh, Mr. Spock, and then you've got Captain Kirk, who's the captain, and then you've got Dr. McCoy, who's my favorite, um, who's played by DeForest Kelly, who was actually born in Georgia. Oh. Um, and he is the chief medical officer, and so it's basically their shenanigans going across uh, and finding different alien life um, and different alien critters, as you'll see with this, this and particular the 1960s episode. alien critters in the always 19 funny. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, definitely. There's one episode, uh, and I don't think it's this one, there's a dog that is an <laughs> alien, but they, they spray-painted it pink, and they added, like, a horn or maybe oh, no. two, and it is the most awkward looking thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh no. Yeah. Poor baby. I know, I know. Wait, so it takes place over five years, but there's only, it only ran for three years. Did it get canceled before it was it supposed did. to? It did. Oh, not, it did get canceled. Um, the, the third season is definitely not as strong as the first two, um, and it was one of the first uh, uh, episodes in uh, series in general to have a bunch of they have people of color you know they've got different um ethnicities and they actually have the first interracial kiss um oh. that happened and which was a big thing mm -hmm. and i read um i think it was william shatner's one of his autobiographies they didn't actually kiss they ended up doing that thing where they're kissing on so, so the, the way that they're holding it holding each other like they're actually kissing on their own hands instead of actually kissing that because that was like a big thing because people racists were upset oh because racists were oh, very very upset and they were like well we're doing this no matter what so screw you guys but Good also yeah exactly and so it was it was definitely before its time it had a small cult following but it didn't really get big until I believe it was the next generation, um, Star Trek The Next Generation, which had uh, Picard and everybody like that. Uh, I believe that was in the 90s, the 80s. I'm not really, I'm not really uh, up to date on that one because this one's the one that has favorite. Jonathan Frakes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's big on this channel because of the yeah. whole, you know, uh, Beyond Belief. Yes. And his his overjoy nature of yes. just scaring people. Yes. Exactly. Is yeah. Exactly. Yes. And my kitten is is joining us. He may jump up here. I don't know. Uh, people started becoming more and more interested in it retroactively after it was canceled. Um, after three seasons, but the fact that it got three seasons back in the 1960s was such a groundbreaking kind of, you know, uh, where I, in, in the 1960s there was a big thing about, you know, the Cold War was about to start yeah. and all that, and, and we're like, oh, you know, um, xenophobia, there was a big thing, and that's actually addressed in some of the episodes, uh, xenophobia and different, different kinds of things like that. That's so, cool. Yeah. Um. Not cool that they're xenophobia, yeah. but cool yeah. that they were addressing. <laughs> yes, they were. They were definitely. It. They were definitely before their before their time, and it it became a big old cult classic. And it's just they're very easy episodes to watch, um, and you know they they deal with some some heavy stuff, but it's always got some sort of lightheartedness in it. Nice. Oh hi, welcome back to my channel. Yes. We're covering nostalgic obscure, otherwise strange content. <laughs> this is my best friend Natasha. Hello. I wanted her to be on the channel for forever, um, but we have this little. Um, and Demi Lovato going on. So this is the first time now that we're vaccinated yes. that we can be in an enclosed yes, space. Yes, exactly. Yes. So we don't we don't give each other the plague. That's always good. Yes. Or kill or kill our family members with the okay. plague. So we're watching episode season two, episode fifteen of Star Trek, the original Star Trek. Um, and you're gonna be giving a little bit of a 
of a rundown on it, and I'm going to be yeah. watching it for the first time. Yes. Okay. As yes. somebody who knows almost nothing about Star Trek. And I mean, as somebody who doesn't know much more than that, I'm, I've am i seen all of the original series, um, uh, which is three, uh, three seasons, a couple of different times, um, but I've been into it since uh, 2010. So, I mean, I'm sort of still kind of new-ish, but I did start with the original series. Space Station K-7 now within sensor range, Captain. Good. How close will we come to the nearest Klingon outpost if we continue on our present course? Ah, one parsec, sir. Close enough to smell them. <laughs> okay. I've already got a couple of questions. <laughs> yes, yes. First of all, why does everybody have a turtleneck except for William Shatner? <laughs> so, William Shatner, um, his his character goes through a bunch of different uniforms. Okay. And so the uniform he's currently wearing is sort of this slightly greenish uniform. Okay. And it's supposed to be... It's it's difficult to say because sometimes he'll wear it in at formal occasions and sometimes it's like his more his pajamas so like he wears it <laughs> more casual so it really depends I'm not entirely certain and I don't think they ever address it but I do know for a fact that um, I was reading his autobiography all of this material the way that all of it is made it rides up so much oh, and no. so they were constantly like if you'll notice throughout the episode they're always pulling, pulling down their down. shirts <laughs> except for William Shatner who likes to go shirtless whenever possible. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I was making a little joke, sir. And who is, who is this, who is this so, person? So this is Chekhov. Uh, he um, is, I believe, if I remember correctly, he is one of the navigators of, of this, the whole ship, uh, and he is Russian. And he uh, his, his whole thing is, like, everything is better in Russia. Russia has <laughs> invented everything, and, like... The area was first mapped by the famous Russian astronomer Ivan Burkov, almost 200... John Burke. And this is, uh, this is after, um, I think they had, like, a World War Three, and then there was a... a, a a genetic war if I remember correctly it's it's more addressed in um, some other series but like the entire world is at peace like all okay. of it is together so like there's no you know us versus them the Cold War is definitely not a thing even though the Cold War was starting to happen while this was being written so John Burke was the chief astronomer at the Royal Academy in Old Britain at the time oh Royal Academy <laughs> I, I feel like I can't explain his energy. He seems so gleeful. He is. He is. He is quite. He he takes quite. He, he's he's quite. It's interesting because Anton Yelchin he um, portrayed him in the the new movies that they that came out that were based off of the original series. And he's a, he's a very Russian, very gleeful, very excited sort of bright eyed and bushy tailed portion of the crew. <laughs> nice. Under dispute between the two parties since initial contact. I messed up my eyebrows the other day and I had to fill them in so I. To have Spock eyebrows. That's not <laughs> that's not related to this episode. I just thought I would mention that. I, I like how um, as at the very beginning of the the first season, like they have eye shadow that is so purple it looks like his eyes are black all the time. Oh. And then as it goes on, it gets less and less. But he always has some sort of perfect eye shadow, and I'm yeah. like so envious. Captain, I'm picking up a subspace distress call. Priority channel. It's from space station K7. Got a wolf factor six. It's called one emergency. That's a disaster call. They're they're they've got different um, bands on their arms, and that basically shows their rank. And so Spock is a um, chief science officer, but he's also the second in command. So he has two bands, if I remember correctly. Uh, Dr. McCoy has uh, three bands, but one in the middle that's sort of dotted, and that just shows he's chief medical officer. Nice. This is a red alert. Man your battle station. All hands. So wait, what's the what's the mission? Like what what? What are they being called out to do? So, uh, if I remember correctly, there is some sort of issue that they that um, the Tribbles are are going to come into play, and Tribbles are you'll see what they're like. Okay. And they um, they're basically furry sentient bunnies that breathe like nobody's business and that they just adorable. pop them out they're they're very <laughs> adorable and they they're a big thing in the truck fandom so you can buy them and they just sort of look um they kind of look like a dead cat like <laughs> but and so to clarify a dead cat um basically if you're outside booming um for some sort of film you put this sort of fuzzy uh, protective thing over the microphone in order to protect it um, from the elements and sort of get better sound and they call it a dead cat and so it kind of looks like a dead cat <laughs> Yeah, it sounds more violent than it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely not as violent as it sounds. You know, film people like to be edgy. I was, <laughs> I don't know, I might cut this out. I was on set one time and I yeah. was standing in, and uh, I think you know this story. I was standing in in this little tiny kitchen. One of the one of the lighting guys came in and he was like, "Yeah, can I get a dead hooker in the <laughs> in the kitchen?" And it <laughs> snapped me out of what I was gonna say or what I was thinking. <laughs> And I just kind of looked at him, and he saw me, and he realized how weird that sounded. He said, oh, I'm sorry, that's what we call one of the lights. And I was just like, 
why? And he said, you don't want to know. And he walked away, and I never found out why. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's a dead hooker. Boy. Mm. I would love to hear the story behind that. It's too bad we'll never know. Yeah. I've been a little bit, I've been concerned, and I think about it at least twice a week. I'm just like, what? I, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> no, no, probably not. So fun fact, the opening and closing of the door was always uh, manually done. So whenever you see a door open or close, that at least in the original series, it was manually done. That's funny. Space, the final frontier. This is when William Shatner gets to be dramatic <laughs> and the um the actual they actually had a, a a model that was about this big that was perfectly made that they used for this intro nice to boldly go where no man has gone before i'm being taken through several emotions <laughs> yes i love this singer it changes slightly as the seasons go on and i'm like what happened to the original one Distress call. I don't know why I thought he was gonna pat him on the head. <laughs> yeah, he's always he's always gotta He's always perplexed. Yeah. <laughs> I must apologize for the distress call. Mr. Lurie, you issued a priority one distress call. State the nature of your emergency. He's like, you woke us up, <laughs> you called us out here. You made the highest priority call, and like you want me to just come over and you see? You better have a good explanation. I'll try to explain. You'll try to explain. You'd better be prepared to do more than that. Yeah. Kirkow. You tell him. Kirkow. Mr. Spock, I need your help. Mr. Chekhov, maintain battle readiness, Lieutenant Ahura. See that the transporter room is standing by. Aye, sir. Transporter room, stand by. And now, Captain, I want all available security guards. I want them posted around the storage compartments. Storage compartments, storage compartments. <laughs> Why did he say it twice? <laughs> He's so, he wants heads to roll for the fact that he's out here. He hates his job. So I like much. how he didn't take a breath. He's storage compartment, storage compartment. It's <laughs> like he glitched for a minute. I want to see somebody use it in like a trap song. Storage compartment, storage compartment. <laughs> like you. <laughs> it needs to be sampled somewhere. The storage compartments containing the quadro triticale. The what? The what? The what? What? He did it again. He's broken. <laughs> quadro triticale is a high yield grain four-lobed hybrid of wheat and rye. A perennial also, if I'm not mistaken. Canada, uh, Mr. What? Spock, you made your point. You made your point? <laughs> Shut up, Spock. So my favorite thing is, is like the humans that are settling at other places, they're all, they always wear these jumpsuits. And yeah. they're in different colors, but like they're always this dull drab color and this this slightly orangey color. Like it's like a prison uniform. <laughs> the quadro triticale is not wheat, Captain. Yeah, he's snazzy. Yeah. He's got like a whole like fitted suit going. He does. Quadro triticale is the only earth grain that will grow on Sherman's planet. They're very serious about their grain. They are very. A little look. <laughs> They're like an old married couple. They really are. They're I have never fish. questioned the orders or the intelligence of any representative of the Federation. Until now. <laughs> <laughs> sassy Kirk. He's so sassy. Also, I like how their technology kind of like they predicted like all kinds of like modern technology like the phone and the the flip phone the, the flip the, the communicator device yeah also facetime yeah uh, like, oh definitely uh, yeah definitely summoning a starship on a priority a1 channel what is she wearing i just a1 noticed a1 she has wings <laughs> wait <laughs> what she has tiny little wings oh I mean, she's pulling it off she is she's so pretty it is like a fairy costume though it is starship definitely I see you didn't waste any time taking your shore leave. So, like, did somebody have to, like, pull it? Yeah. Like, with a, with uh -huh. a, like, a pulley? Yep. That's funny. Yep. Oh, quattro triticale. Does everybody know about this wheat but me? Everybody's just in, like, an agriculture club and nobody told him. <laughs> he wasn't invited. <laughs> it's like the office with the, with the finer things society. <laughs> they didn't invite Jim. Surely you want some. Is it a zipper? I don't know. It's like Velcro. <laughs> he just like ripped it apart from the rest of his shirt. And he was like, hey kids, want to buy a watch? <laughs> I wonder what the, the costumers thought. Like, you broke our jacket. It wasn't supposed to do that. Surely you want. Not at your price. Oh, what is it? Is it alive? Is it alive? <laughs> it looks like a troll ball. <laughs> it, yeah, it does. 
Oh, it's adorable. Yeah, and you had it in a pocket. It's a triple. A triple? Only the sweetest creature known to man. <laughs> like, you just pulled it out of your breast pocket. Like, oh, hey, this is a critter I just keep in here. Can it breathe in there? <laughs> oh, also, do I have to be worried about her because she's wearing red and everybody who wears red, no, don't they? Okay. No, you do not. She's she's one of the exceptions. Her and Scotty, who is the engineer, they both wear red. Um, It's just, it's really a station. It's just their engineering okay. station, but somehow they always just send them down for scapegoats, but not her. <laughs> isn't there, isn't there, like, an episode where, like, where, like, one of them finds just, like, a dead body, and yes. more Spock is just like, ugh. Yes. He's just more, like, confused than yes. anything else. Yes, there is. <laughs> and it is a red shirt. <laughs> now you can see for yourself how much the lovely little lady appreciates the finer thing. What? As it moves slightly. Can you just trust... imagine, like, a PA behind there just, like, slightly moving it from its <laughs> fibers, just pulling it along? <laughs> Yeah, I love I love things like this where they had to do stuff practically. Yes. In fact, I'll sell you this one. Hey, he's eating my grain. It's not even your grain. Nobody called dibs on it, so he just took the grain. Kirk gave it to me, and he just never took it back, so like it's fine. Do they even allow pets on the ship? I'm pretty sure they don't. Yeah, there's a whole like logistics thing that just opened up. It's like where do they where do they keep them? Where do they what do, do they, they feed are them? They, are or... they litter box trained? I mean, <laughs> where, if not. How are you going to take it for a walk? <laughs> Good point. The key to our winning of this planet is the grain quadro triticale. I think they just like to say it. Because they put in, like, they don't even just say the grain quadro triticale. And it is kind of fun to say. A little bit difficult, but they're like, The hey. writers made that up and they were like, you gotta use it. We spent all night coming up with that name. <laughs> you gotta do it. They all look very unconcerned. I was gonna say they're not they're not hastening nearly fast <laughs> they're enough. They're just like whatever. Something. They're extras. They don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> Somebody probably told them to walk quietly, and you can't really run and walk quietly no. at the same time. No. While its captain waits in the station manager's office, their intentions are unknown. I like the goatees that the Klingons all sport. Oh yes. <laughs> all the the same exact facial hair. Oh yeah. And it's funny to note what they look like now versus what they look like in the new next generation and like they they end up getting more and more prosthetics and like yeah. in anyways a receding hairline like they add all of it but what they begin like they just look like normal people they don't even have pointed ears and they're supposed to they're just like just give them a goatee it's the, good enough they are supposed to have pointed ears uh, at least they do later because they're sort of distant cousins of the vulcans okay so they're supposed to sort of look the same, and they don't. Um, yeah. Question. Yep. What is a Vulcan? <laughs> okay, so Vulcans, uh, that's what Spock is. They're a okay. peaceful, um, they have uh, touch telepathy, they're a peaceful race. Um, well, they didn't always be. They're, they're always about uh, being logical and non-emotional. Okay. Because when they get emotional is when they feel like they lose control, and so they're, they're basically very good at, you know, uh, meditating and yoga and stuff like that. Nice. Spock is half human, half human, half Vulcan. Okay. And so that he's basically ridiculed on both sides, um, sort of. I mean, you know, as much as, as Vulcans can do that. But, like, they... Um, McC I'm not sure if McCoy... I think McCoy shows up, the doctor, and the he always calls him a pointy-eared bastard, which is fantastic, <laughs> or a pointy-eared gob goblin. It's fantastic. <laughs> we Klingons are not as luxury-minded as you Earthers. We do not equip our ships with... How shall I say it? non-essentials so basically the klingons um they're a lot like the vulcans like i said but they believe in war and being super emotional and super aggressive so they're basically the opposite of the vulcans okay yeah uh-uh sweetheart baby boy he wants tea no you don't another technical journal scotty hi okay so scotty is their engineer and he is very scottish which is really funny <laughs> okay um he's played by james doohan um and apparently james doohan and uh william shatner had like a big issue with one another uh -oh. um but he um i think he was in some some different wars and everything like that he's he's not scottish he's he's um he's american but he has a really deep scottish brogue don't you ever relax i am relaxed He's the beam me up guy? Yes. Okay. Which, fun fact, they never actually say beam me up Scotty in really? the entire uh, original series. I'm not sure if I remember if they do it in, this, in the movies or not. But you're gonna fall down, dude. This morning I found out that he... <laughs> I mean, she had had babies. Well, I'd say in that case you got a bargain. You running a nursery, Lieutenant? Oh, Captain. <laughs> like, oh, Captain, I'm sorry. I brought on a pregnant Tribble. <laughs> the most curious creature, Captain. 
It's trilling seems to have a tranquilizing effect on the human nervous system. <laughs> He's adorable. He really is. Fortunately, of course, I am immune to it. He's immune. He's not. I feel like Spock would be a cat person. Definitely. Wait, so is that her the same trouble that she had? It, like, tripled in size. <laughs> Did they lose the first one? They're just like, eh. Nah, yeah, this one's fine. This one's fine. Lieutenant, do you mind if I take one of these down to the lab? Say, Lieutenant, as soon as you're giving them away, can I have one? Oh, sure, why not? I, I think they're old enough. I think they're old enough. Yeah, go ahead and take it. That extra, the blonde one, just yeah. looked directly into the camera. <laughs> Kirk, this station is swarming with Klingons. I was not aware, Mr. Barris, that 12 Klingons constitutes a swarm. <laughs> He's like, so let's talk about the etymology of the word swarm. <laughs> I don't think 12 Klingons consists of a swarm. Maybe 15, but you only got 12. <laughs> he does not care. Also, that guy yeah. has walked by like three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fun thing is, is they only have so many corridors, and so they just reuse the same corridors over and over, and it's not a very big at least from what I read from, from his autobiography, it wasn't very big, so they just sort of recycled extras a lot. May I ask where you'll be? Sick pay with a headache. Sick pay with a headache. <laughs> Look at Spock's face. He's just like, okay. Spock's the only one that does any work. Yeah. So that looks like an airtight container. How can they breathe? It doesn't have holes in it. How many of these did Uhura give you? Just one. He has a skull in the background. Yeah, I was just looking at that. It looks menacing. It does. The <laughs> cranium is very large compared to the eyes. <laughs> is it a Klingon skull? Because maybe you don't want to show them that. Uh, how do they... Uh... I, uh, I haven't figured that out yet. But I can tell you this much. So that little tiny... Um, ring that he has on his finger was actually his mother's ring. Oh. Um, and so he he made a point of always wearing it. And he, so it's, I think they added in to his backstory that it was like his wedding ring or his, oh. his wife's wedding ring because he's he's divorced. He has a kid um, in the in the series, but oh. he's divorced. But that's actually his mother's wedding ring. Oh, it's cute. So it's a lot like uh, Peter Capaldi has a ring like that too that he wears for Doctor Who. I want you to go and show you. Make sure that everybody stays out of trouble. But Captain, I sir. He looks so sad. He knows he's a red shirt. He's like, <laughs> damn. There's a that that girl in the background has wings too, but she's wearing yellow. She looks like Tinkerbell. She does. Can I offer you a charming little tribble? I like how he just holds it with one hand. Uh, like it's an animal, but it's gosh. fine. <laughs> Can't understand it. I. Never seen him act this way before. Get out of here with that parasite. Oh, the arm continuity is not good. Take it away. Yes. Okay, so that's shrieking. I have a fun story about that. You can cut this out later if okay. you want. But fun story. So did I ever tell you about the time that I picked up a vole? Like a baby vole? Mm -mm. Okay, so I found this baby vole. And I saw it was, it was moving. Voles are basically moles, but they're slightly less horrifying looking okay um and it was probably about this big and it was it was rooting underneath our pine straw and I was like what is that and I'm like I had decided and I mean I'm like 25 at the time I had decided it was a fairy because you know <laughs> it's me and so I'm like I'm gonna catch this thing so I, I follow it and I grab it it made the same noise that Tribble made. It shrieked oh. so loudly and bit me. And, of course, I didn't let it go because I'm pretty stupid. And, like, yeah. And so then I brought it inside and had to show my brothers because I had just caught a vole. And this thing is shrieking its head off. And it sounds exactly like a Tribble. And that's and that's the story. Eventually, it, it got away from me. And then we didn't have problems with voles for a couple of years because I'm pretty sure I scarred it. <laughs> you didn't get rabies from the bite. No. Okay. And then I had to look it up. My mom was like, you have to, you have to make sure that you don't need to go to the doctor because because you did not let this stupid thing go when you grabbed it. And I'm like, Mama, you birthed me. Like, I don't know what else you were expecting. Are you really surprised? Oh, None of us are surprised. How would, you like to How would you like to enter another little transaction? This time, a tribble for a spot. A tribble. I like how he picks them up and just... Like, they're not animals. It's, it's just the thing of cloth. <laughs> Me when somebody asks how many mental health issues you have. <laughs> oh, hold on one more. Oh, oh, forgot this one. She's still got the fairy wings. Oh, she's a server. Okay. okay. Maybe that's their uniform. Well, this is a drink for a man. Scotch? Aye. It was invented by a little old lady from Leningrad. Everything was invented by a Russian. That's exactly what that vole sounded like, I swear to you. Well, frankly... 
I never liked Earthers. They remind me of Regulan bloodworms. <laughs> He's just prejudiced he's just, against all Earth people. He's just people. picking a fight, yeah. Okay. I think Kling Klingons hate everybody. Okay. Overbearing, tin-plated dictator with delusions of God. It's liquid courage. He's like, Lord, give me strength. <laughs> Wait, is Kirk just sitting there? That's right. No, that's not Kirk. It's a guy that, that vaguely looked like Kirk for half a second. And if I think that Kirk is a Denebian slime devil, Kirk, Kirk probably wouldn't care anyway. Yeah, no, Kirk would be like, whatever. No drink, you drink. It's not even his drink, they just like switched it around. And I also don't think if somebody's angry you should give them more alcohol. No. I like that's a bad plan. <laughs> 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 he acts like a child. I love him. <laughs> I'd say that Captain Kirk deserves his ship sagging. Oh, rust buckets is designed like a garbage scow. So he doesn't care about the captain, but if you insult his ship, oh by golly. I meant to say that it should be hauled away as garbage. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. The punch, he didn't even aim for his face. No, he didn't. He was sort of in the vicinity. <laughs> Did he just backhand him? Yeah. <laughs> the guys in the, in the jumpsuits. So that's the same energy as like Desperate Housewives when yeah. they like get into fights. Yeah. He's like dumping the triples on the ground. He's trying to get them away and he's just like, oh crap, I just dropped half of them. <laughs> the running with the hands up. <laughs> this is the Zemo vibes. Yeah, it does. Who threw him over that table? I'm not sure. <laughs> He just sort of ended up there. He just barrel rolled. I like that guy in the, the extra in the background. Like this is the greatest thing in the world. Look at him grinning. Do you think they used crash mats back in the day, or do you think they were just like, eh? I think they were eh. eh. Honestly, builds character. Yeah. It's, it's almost slow motion because you can tell that they're trying not to actually hurt each other or hit <laughs> each other, and they were just like, eh, we, eh, we don't need post eh. on that. It's fine. <laughs> How did, how did he have it where it didn't, it, the grape juice or whatever it is, didn't get like slosh in his jacket? Men's pockets. I want to know who started it. I'm waiting. I know you. You started it, didn't you? No, sir, I didn't. Well, who did? There's a bruise. I am. I don't know, sir. I don't know, sir. It's a disapproving parent. Yeah, he's very disappointed. Also, this has the same energy as um, Parks and Rec, where he's like, okay, who broke it? Yes. I'm not mad. I just want to know who broke it. Yes. I want to know who threw the first punch. Like duck duck. Sorry, so he has a really crappily made black eye there, and you can only tell because the shimmer of whatever eyeshadow they used got on the glint of it. What caused it, Sky? They insulted us, sir. Must have been some insult. Aye, it was. Well, it's also funny too because what is he gonna say? Like, oh, I didn't beat the guy up when he was making fun of you. <laughs> I just I held out until he made fun of my ship. Why did Chekhov want to start a fight? Um, uh, the Klingons, uh, is this off the record? No, this is not off the record. He's like, you don't get immunity. <laughs> Klingons call you a, a tin-plated, overbearing, swaggering dictator with delusions of godhood. And after they said all this, that's when you hit the Klingons. No, sir. He's like, well, what about the boys? <laughs> the boys support boys. <laughs> they call the Enterprise a garbage skull. It would be funny if he was just like, oh, hell no, and he just went and beat them all up again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's so many of them. It looks like he's about to eat them. I was just gonna it say. It looks like he's gonna eat them. He's got them on a plate to, to weigh them. But it looks like he's about to eat them. He's like, oh, this one looks good. That one looks good. And he's just not a buffet. I just like that he's weighing them the way that you weigh kittens. <laughs> yes. I see no practical use for them. I see no practical use. <laughs> Doctor, I am well aware of human characteristics. I am frequently inundated by them, but I have trained myself to put up with practically anything. He resents his emotions. Oh, he definitely does. <laughs> don't we all? I don't know too much about these little tribbles yet, but there is one thing that I have discovered. What is that, Doctor? I like them better than I like you. <laughs> They're frenemies. <laughs> he just sat on one. <laughs> Is it dead? <laughs> oh no, it's not moving! There's so many of them! Oh my god. That's 
a backup one in case the first one's dead. That's the mo the only motorized one that they were able to make. <laughs> they like catch it before it falls off. We don't want it to break. How did all these troubles get on the bridge? I don't know, sir. They do seem to be all over the ship. She's so delighted by this fact. Well, the nearest thing I can figure out is that they're born pregnant. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. So it's like a Russian nesting doll. There's just one inside, yeah. the one inside, Always. the one... Okay. Always. Which seems to be quite a time saver. A time saver? <laughs> it's like, did you ever have the Barbie doll that um had the... The pregnancy, yes. the pregnancy Barbie doll. Yes. Where like I had the one where like her the pregnancy stomach magneted onto her stomach. Yeah. stomach. Yeah. So she lost her baby fat like yeah. immediately. Yeah. Like and then then you had like a flat one just like stick back on. Yeah. 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 There was like the little baby in yes. this. It, yeah. It was yeah. weird. It was weird. <laughs> it seems they're bisexual, reproducing at will. <laughs> reproducing at will. I'm pretty sure that's not what bisexual means. No. <laughs> reproducing at will would be a great name for a man. <laughs> they're consuming our supplies and returning nothing. They are freeloaders, and I want them off this ship. I just love the very purple walls, just in the purple light on the purple walls. It and looks that, like the friend's apartment. Yeah, that sad plant. Happen. Surely you must have realized what would happen if you removed the tribbles from their predator-filled environment. So he removed the tribbles from being killed naturally. So I guess whatever, wherever they were originally... They they were they got killed as fast as they could be reproduced, but now they don't have anything to kill them, so they're just reproducing infinitely. By that you mean do they breed quickly? <laughs> of course, that's how I maintain my stock. This guy's like the Tiger King of space. <laughs> Sell an instruction and maintenance manual with this thing. If I did, what would happen to man's search for knowledge? So if you provide a user manual, what would happen to man's search for knowledge? I think that's the Ikea slogan. <laughs> I think of this project as very important. It is you I take lightly. <laughs> what a burn. I take this project very, very seriously. <laughs> But on the contrary, I take you very lightly. <laughs> like, wow, you're gonna need <laughs> you're gonna need some burn ointment for that. You have given free and complete access to this station to a man who is quite probably a Klingon agent. Wouldn't it be a funny thing? Like, imagine a spy showing up with like the most obvious thing possible. Dra let's. How do I draw the most attention to myself? Yes. Unfortunately. The sad little squeak. <sighs> I have a ship to tend to. Au revoir. They just give it back to him. I wonder what happened to all these troubles. Like, after the show wrapped, do they just give them away as, as crew gifts? I really hope somebody still has one. I hope so, too. I have I have this horrible feeling that they didn't realize how, like, big it was going to be, so, like, they threw it away. Oh, I hope not. Like, you know, when, like, the original, like, episodes of Doctor Who got erased? Because yes. they were like, who's going to care about this in the future? Yes. Like the Library of Alexandria. Yeah, I'm still upset about that. This is my chicken sandwich and coffee. Ew. So he just said, my chicken sandwich in a cup. Looks at the cup, there's a triple in it, of course. But his chicken sandwich and his coffee, is the coffee on the plate? Or does he just have two cups? Or did he mix the coffee with the chicken sandwich? Maybe. Oh, I'm just concerned. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Everyone just tumbled off the top. <laughs> Wow, Pete, I'm surprised PETA hasn't pulled this episode. There is a machine, all right. <laughs> and they're probably in all the other food processors, too. Ow. Did he say ow? When yeah. he said they're in the food processor. I process. think he said how, but ow would also be good, because if they're in the food processor, are they dead? Are they alive? There are vents of that type on the space station. And in the storage compartments. Uh-oh. The triples that eat everything could be on the space station with the grain. Oh, by the way, that's 3D chess, which I don't know how to play normal chess, but that's 3D chess. Interesting. And, and apparently, like, it's a real thing. I don't think it started as a real thing, but it's a real thing Yeah, now. people play it. I I don't understand it, but people do play it. I don't understand real chess, so... Also, the whole thing about the, the things being in the food processor reminded me of when, when I was, like, eight. We had birds nesting in our vent. Oh. And, um... Mom was very concerned that somebody would turn the fan on and then oh. bye bye birdie. So we had to bye bye birdie. We duct taped down the light the light switch in oh. that bathroom and it was like that for a month That's... to save the birds. They're everywhere. <laughs> They're on the transporter. Are they gonna be transported with them? 
energize. I thought he was gonna throw it. <laughs> I thought he was too. Okay, the triples did come with them. I was gonna say, how did it not come with them? Do you think at least once William Shatner ran into a door that they couldn't open fast enough? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's not working, sir. It seems to be stuck. Yeah, let me try. Here, let me try with my strength. <laughs> he puts it under his arm. <laughs> Whoa. He just stands there in the onslaught of triples coming out. I want the job of throwing triples on William Shatner. <laughs> There's so many of them. They look like hedgehogs. They do. They look like carpet. They <laughs> do. Gorged on my grain? That guy? Yeah. This guy? I don't know if he is the guy that was Nancy Drew's dad in the Nancy Drew and Hardy Boy show or if he just looks like him, but that's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> keep hitting him in the head. Like a PA going, okay. <laughs> all we have to do is quit feeding him. You starve them. This triple is dead. And so are these. Oh, they're just triple corpses? I hate <laughs> He's that. surrounded by triple corpses. It's so dark. <laughs> He's like, gross. Bones. I want the triples, the grain, everything analyzed. So he calls him Bones because an old doctor was called Sawbones um, back in, you know, the Civil War era. Okay. And um, for whatever reason, Kirk just was like, you're a doctor. I'm going to call you Sawbones. And <laughs> Bones is, is for short. And so they, um, in the new movies, they call him Bones because at one point... Um, um, the, uh, he said, you know, all I've got left is me bones or something like that. And they're like, yeah, let's call him bones. It's like, no, it's saw bones. You totally like screwed that up. Why would you do that? <laughs> saw bones is so much more interesting. Do you think the PA that was throwing them was like labeled the trouble corpse thrower? <laughs> Close that door. I mean, you're closest to it. <laughs> it's within arm's reach. Somebody else just has to like wait in there. I like that they actually have like actual post-it notes on the <laughs> yes in the future post-it survived oh definitely post-its and cockroaches captain kirk what do you want what do you want i expect you to assume full responsibility for the persecution of klingon nationals klingon klingon kirk you can't let him that will give them the wedge they need to claim sherman's planet the, wait 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 that will give them the wedge that they need I don't think that that's quite the phrase. <laughs> the wedge? Who put the tribbles in the quadro triticale? Who put the tribbles? I think the tribbles went in there by themselves. You know. They went into the vents. I mean, like, they already established that, so there's only one question. On. Why, well, you're right, Mr. Jones. They don't like Klingons. That guy doesn't like the tribbles any more than they like him either. No. But they do like Vulcans. He has a he has a theory. And <laughs> McCoy just shows up. Obviously, Tribbles are very perceptive creatures, Captain. We all know he pets them and names them when nobody's around. Oh, he definitely does. He totally does. Mr. Barris, they like you. Well, there's no accounting for taste. There's no accounting for taste. <laughs> they don't like you, Mr. Darwin. I wonder why. Our feet is all wrong. Jim, this man is a Klingon. This man is a Klingon! <laughs> <laughs> they actually published a medical manual that has the um, anatomy of Vulcans and Klingons and all of these things. It's really cool and like really, really <laughs> nerdy because they actually went out of their way to make all of this fake medical stuff and I, I'll have to bring it over next time. And, yeah. and they have a Klingon, and, like, their heart is in a different place. Like, um, for instance, Vulcan's hearts, I think, are where our stomachs are. Oh. And, yeah, and so, like, it's it's weird, and, of course, they have green blood and all of that. Um, well, of course, they do have green blood. It's copper-based, so it's green. Um, <laughs> I've, I've read this thing. Obviously, I'm a huge nerd. But, like, they, they have it, and this is Starfleet Medical Manual. And you can actually find them on eBay. That's where I got mine. Um, and uh, it's, it's just really fun. <laughs> Anyways, fun fact. So that's kind of how he's like, oh, this man is a Klingon. He'll actually give you the temperature, normal ambient temperature of Vulcans. Uh, Vulcans, even though they say in a lot of uh, stories that Vulcans have higher temperatures than humans, they actually have lower temperature than humans because their, their uh, planet is really hot. And okay. so in order not to overheat, they have lower temperatures. Interesting. Fun fact. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. What about the grain, Bones? Oh, yes, it was poison. <laughs> what about the grain? Oh, yes, it was poison. Oh, yeah, the food supply? Yeah, it was poisoned. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's been impregnated with a virus. The virus turns into an inert material in the bloodstream. And the more the organism eats, the more inert matter is built up. Okay, so scientifically, that is all wrong. Um, yeah. I mean, like... I get the I get the idea of it, but basically, the it, it it starves you to death by having a lot of it in you, which is not really how that works. But I mean, you know, 
it's fine. It's just hand wavy stuff. And we didn't know much about viruses in the 60s anyways. We did, but not quite to the extent we know now. Did, is there, isn't there, did you show me once a book that you have called, like, Star Trek Corona? Yes. Is that a, is that a, that is a thing. thing. It is a thing. It's, um, and it's not, it has nothing to do with the coronavirus. I think it has something to do with, um, I think it's an alien. I never, I never actually read it, but they actually have a bunch of Star Trek novels that are basically fan fiction, but they're official. <laughs> it's official Star Trek, um, it, it's part of the canon, and it's hundreds of novels, hundreds. I, I got rid of a bunch of them, um, at the beginning of last year, just because I didn't have time to read all of them, and they're not all very good. Like, <laughs> some of them are by the writers that wrote, wrote some of the original episodes, and some of them are just random writers, and then some of them are just like, why? 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 Oh, as I hit my head. Why? But, <laughs> like, okay? yeah, I'm fine. Um, and maybe, I mean, you know, I get so excited about Star Trek. But, like, yeah, and so the whole, the whole canon is they read, um, like, different episodes and... And it's funny because it's a lot like comic books where, you know, comic books, you have a whole uh, whatever of co comic books where you, you've got a whole world and then it's like all happening in the same world, but it's not quite the same world. That's kind of like Star Trek novels. It's like a buffet. Yeah, like, basically. Like you can pick what you want. It's basically. A, it's a fiction buffet. Basically. Okay. And, yeah, basically. And so and if anybody, like, especially um, old-fashioned uh Tre trekkers are uh, try to like make fun of people for for reading fan fiction they made it first yeah. so like <laughs> he's just glaring in the corner Bah! you want to you want to talk all right i poison the grain take them away and the gerbils had nothing to do with it i swear it sounded like he said the gerbils <laughs> guards seize him these doors are like pointy and i would totally have run into one of those and like gouged myself well it's funny because i've been watching all of the like the original doctor who yeah and it's funny because in the like the original like introduction of the daleks if uh. you've ever seen it they have sliding doors like that but they're like curved so they slide up and yes. like this yes and so i'm like did they steal that from doctor who i like how they're afraid of the triples like what are the triples gonna do breed all over them <laughs> He looks so defeated. He's just like, this is my life. Do you know what the penalty is for transporting an animal proven harmful to human life? The penalty is 20 years in a rehabilitation colony. A rehabilitation colony? That's their prison colonies. Yeah. Semi-off topic again. I was listening while I was cleaning. I was listening to, like, um, these old, like, radio shows. Yeah. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called The Late Late Horror Show that I love to listen to. And, uh... It was this, like, sci-fi show where they were putting somebody in jail, and I guess, like, in this universe, jail is Uranus. They just use that for prison. So the guy was like, you start talking now or it's life in Uranus. And I was just like, oh, that's hilarious. I love that. Do you think they knew? Probably. <laughs> and they did help you to find the Klingon agent. You saved a lot of lives that way. Did we, though? Pick up every trip on the space station. All four million of them. But take years! 17.9 to be exact. I would have taken the 10 years on a rehabilitation planet, personally. You know. So this guy's job, like, while they're, like, fighting space crime and doing their job and stuff, he's just in the background just, like, sweeping up triple carcasses. <laughs> yes! He's like, gotta start somewhere. Good, that means Sherman's planet will get its squadron for Kaylee only a few weeks late. We'll just start till then. He's got trauma now. He does. Triple trauma. Gutty! Where are the triples? Oh, uh, Captain, uh, where are the triples? He's like, what the hell did you do to him? Why, do, why does no one want to tell me? Really, Mr. Spock's recommendation. Of course. Spock. Based on computer analysis, of course. He's like a parent with a bunch of guilty children. Where are the triples? Scott, you didn't transport them into space, did you? <laughs> Look at his face, though! I gave them to the Klingons, sir. I gave them to the Klingons. Where there'll be no triple at all. No triple at all! Before they went into warp, I transported the whole kit and caboodle into the air engine room. That's so, almost inhuman. <laughs> so two questions. One, did this start a war with the Klingons? And <laughs> two, what about the other guy who now thinks he has to clean up all the all the triple carcasses? Is it just like an Easter egg hunt where they're like, no, they must be really in there? Well, they they, they were on the they were on the um non they weren't on the the Enterprise. They were on that other that other okay. whatever. So like there were a bunch of triples over there still, but okay. the ones on the Enterprise are now on the Klingon ship. And as far as I know, nobody has mentions them again. But <laughs> I don't know. The Klingons are just like God damn it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So closing thoughts. Yes. Um, so you said this was like a really, this became like a big thing in the, 
in the fandom. Is this, like, a big thing where, like, it happens this time, nobody speaks about it again, but the fandom doesn't forget? Or do they come back in, like, new iterations? Uh, I don't remember. I think they mention triples every now and then, but, like, I don't think I've ever seen them come back. Now, I have not seen any other series except for this one, so it's very possible they came back um, in the next generation and that kind of thing. I don't think so, though. I think this is really, like, a one-off kind of funny bygone era kind of thing. I know that they made a Christmas ornament with Kirk surrounded by the triple (laughs) corpses. That's adorable. Well, I think we could wrap up the video there. Uh, Do you want to do the sign off for me? I don't know how you sign off. How do you normally sign off? Uh, Tell them thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. All right. Thank you guys so much for walking. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys. Take two. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Remember, if you like this video, to like, comment, and subscribe. And we're going to be signing off. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, My name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. There's something else I say in the middle of that, but I forget what it is. It's okay. I'm Natasha. I'm a dice maker. (laughs) I'll link your dice up in the comments. I make dice. Like, yeah, if you want want dice, I make make RPG uh, tabletop game dice. Oh, yeah. Where can they find you on Instagram? Oh, they can find me on the Folded Crane Dice. Um, Just the Folded Crane Dice kind of long, but I'm there, and I've got all of my my dice on Instagram. I think I've got a Facebook page, too, but it's harder to keep up, so I'm just like Instagram. The next time we have you back, we'll have to do the D&D cartoon. Oh, definitely. 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 That's one of my favorite episodes that you've done. (laughs) I love that cartoon. (laughs) So much fun. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.